Welcome to Dukoscopy TV. Today we will be discussing the UK economy with Jack Meaning, Research Fellow at the National Institute of Economic and Social Research. Jack, the jobless rate dropped to 6.2% in three months through July from 6.4%, a bigger decline than economists had forecast. What does this mean for the economy? Well, so we saw the headline figure today drop to 6.2%. But actually, if uh, you look at an unofficial series the ONS brought out, it actually looks like for July it was below 6%. So um, it's coming down quite drastically, which is part of a longer trend. In general, this is fantastic news for the economy. It means there's more people in jobs. Uh, it means there's activity going on and people are getting out and creating things. There are two things we need to bear in mind. The first of which is that um, the recent numbers that we saw come out today, the fall in the unemployment rate was driven in large part by a fall in participation, so people dropping out um, into inactivity and not even bothering to look for a job, although this is at odds with the longer term trend, so it's less of a concern. The more kind of concerning element is that um, kind of the other side of this is kind of good employment um, alongside output means that output per worker or productivity has been low, and this has really been a kind of a big problem for the UK. We've seen this keeping wages low as we've just had terrible productivity performance. Today's report also showed that the basic pay rise an annual 0.6% in the quarter through July, matching a record low. Could this have a ripple effect on the housing market? Well, so yeah, we saw the 0.6% increase in nominal wages. Now that's about half the percent uh, or half the size of the kind of inflation rate over the same period. So prices are accelerating at a quicker rate than we're seeing people's ability to buy things accelerating. Now, what this means for the housing market is basically every month your ability to buy a house is not keeping up with the prices of those houses. So every month it's going to become harder for you to be able to afford that house that you want. Now, that's not sustainable. We're seeing house growth, depending on which measure you use, house price growth of around 10 to 12 percent. Now, if wages are only going up by kind of 0.6 percent, then we've got real problems in terms of you're losing ground on your ability to buy a house that should hopefully start to turn and we'll see house prices start to grow slightly less strongly and come more into line with wage growth which would be fantastic and actually if you look at some of the more exuberant areas of the london market that's already starting to happen as the more recent data is showing house prices starting to cool in their growth levels the minutes of the boe september policy meeting was also published today showed the central bank's nine policymakers split for a second month on the benchmark interest rate with the majority favouring keeping it at a record low because of increased risks from Europe. Could they be waiting for the referendum and what may happen? Uh, so, I mean, I think in all honesty, the MPC aren't really waiting for the referendum. It's going to have a big influence on policy, for sure, but actually waiting for the referendum itself is probably not what's staying in their hand at the moment. What's really kind of holding them back from raising rates is the fact that we're seeing this weak wage growth for the first thing, which is meaning that people's standard of living isn't increasing by anywhere near as much as it should do. It's also indicative of weak productivity. But on top of that as well, the latest inflation numbers show us that CPI inflation was only 1.5% in the most recent release, and the bank's got a target of keeping it as close to 2% in the medium term as it can. So inflation pressures are actually below and um, where the long-term target is and there's actually more of a risk of it on the downside than there is on the up. So rates are likely to stay lower for at least a little bit longer as the committee makes up its mind. I mean, our general view here at NISA is that it's most likely to happen um, that we'll see the first interest, interest rate rise in February of next year. So that's when we start to see wages pick up and productivity pick up and then the labour market tightens slightly. Thanks, Jack. Keep watching Dukoscopy TV for more news on the UK economy and the market as a whole. Until then, goodbye.